given your long history as a regulator, are you surprised to see all of these big names, be it Facebook, be it Amazon, Apple, or Alphabet, coming under such fierce scrutiny right now? Uh, I'm expecting it because the amount of political scrutiny of the FTC and Department of Justice has been so intense. Uh, they've been called terribly inadequate, if not uh, cowardly in some ways, so that it's not surprising to see the agencies responding by undertaking uh, investigations in this area. Bill, what should be the proper role of regulators in the tech industry? I think to make sure that certain basic rules of fair competition are applied. Uh, uh, to, to, to play the role of, of, a, of a referee in a sporting match where the match is necessarily going to involve uh, a certain amount of roughness, but not to intervene all the time because people don't go to the match to watch the referees. Uh, we had Tim, Co Tim Cook was on CBS yesterday, Apple CEO, and one of the arguments he made about this notion of Apple, be well, he first of all, he batted down the idea that Apple would be a monopoly. But one of the things he said is some people would argue if you're selling a good, then you can't have a product that competes with that good. Uh, and then likening that conversation to Walmart and saying there's decades of U.S. law here. Whether it's Apple or whether it's some of these other companies, would you actually expect there to be an antitrust case and for them to get broken up? Uh, breakup is extremely difficult to accomplish, but uh, having a case would not be surprising at all. In many ways, uh, both the Department of Justice and FTC are being told that their legitimacy as agencies depends on taking action and not simply being observers in this process. So I would expect the announcement of the, of the investigations will lead to some kind of intervention, but a breakup is especially difficult to, to, to obtain under U.S. competition law. The law tends to favor large defendants in this area, so I would expect some form of intervention, probably not a breakup. Hey, Bill, you know, we've been following uh, the kind of agreement that Mike come between uh, or be forged between Facebook and the FTC. Uh, your general view is that fines won't do it. So how do business practices need to change in the form in the case of Facebook specifically? I think that a, a large fine will be an important symbolic step, even though a big fine isn't necessarily going to change the way the firms behave. I think what's going to what's going to be important in looking at the resolution between the FTC and Facebook is the nature of the commitments the FTC gets about changes in behavior, uh, changes in the way in which the firm is allowed to gather and use information about its users. It's the strength of those kinds of commitments that will really make the difference. But the fine will be one step in seeking to, to, to demonstrate the seriousness of the FTC in this area, but also uh, to, 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 to accompany that with, with, with settlement terms that mandate a change in behavior. Do you think the argument that Zuckerberg should be held personally responsible for behavior has been overplayed? Is that too simplistic a solution? I think it is too simplistic a solution. I mean, uh, it's not unusual for the FTC and its consumer protection matters uh, to, 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 to include individuals in, in, its, in, its, in its cases. But, but the more important thing is what kinds of terms come out of the settlement that mandate changes in the way that Facebook behaves. I'm much more interested in the changes in the business model than the specific identification of the CEO or other leading executives. It's the nature of the commitments to change behavior and the way in which those will be monitored and enforced. Yeah, that enforced part to me seems really key here because you, you, you can make promises or you can try to enact changes, but how do you think that methodology should be implemented to actually measure the effect of those changes? I think the FTC is going to have to be more deeply involved than it was in the previous settlement. In some ways, the FTC contracted out the business of oversight by having a third party, in this case PricewaterhouseCoopers, do the oversight and the auditing. I think the FTC itself is going to be have, have to be much more deeply involved in the routine observation of whether or not the specific commitments in the settlement uh, are effective. The last time the FTC depended very much on having this external review by a third party, I think the FTC has to do that by itself in the current, in the, in the current settlement. Hey, finally, Bill, I wondered, uh, 
Do you think the FTC and some of these agencies are craving oversight responsibility, or do they see this whole thing as intractable, uh, a third rail, and would prefer not to have anything to do with it? I think that the oversight responsibility becomes onerous in this respect. Neither agency is keen on being the kind of day-to-day -day overseer and regulator that we see in areas uh, such as uh, electricity and in, uh, and in communications in earlier days. They don't want to be that kind of day-to-day -day oversight institution. So they don't look forward to that kind of responsibility, but I think they understand that in many ways that their effectiveness as agencies depends on taking a more robust role than they've taken in the past. To do anything short of that, I think, could easily lead in the direction of legislation that creates a new institution that will exercise more traditional day-to-day -day regulatory oversight.